on, Death Aura. I feel like I'm coming home. I've liked this map pool, but I feel like I've liked this one best of all. It's gonna be a race. Who will get their opening structure down first? The drama is killing me. It's a photo finish! But they won't stay tied. It takes three more seconds to make a depot. That's the price you pay for having something handcrafted by an SCV. But you know how it is with those Protoss kids. They've got to have instant gratification. Warp, warp, warp. That's all they do. Like this sexy gateway placed in the Reaper block position. Our Protoss player has won over a half a million US dollars playing this game of StarCraft. And it bears mentioning that he came in second at the last Katowice. His official nickname is the Kingslayer. He is Zass! Current world rank 16. You'd be crazy if you didn't think Zest was saving a little something for the pending world championship. Anywho, he does have his probe scout out. No Protoss probe can resist the urge to harass a building SCV. They're just jealous of that old school Terran craftsmanship. That rewarding feeling of building something with your own two electronic hands. Zest will have to put his jealousy aside and warp in his cyber core. He wants to make it harder for the Reaper to jump in at that location. And Clem is indeed making a Reaper. We've been seeing a lot of players go for a Marine first. They like that faster build time. Zest is going to play that dangerous game of trying to slow down the Terran Command Center. Game over, CC down. Our young Terran prodigy was projected to one day become a top 10 Terran player. He kind of said, forget that, and became a top 10 player this year. He is Clem! Current world rank 3. Calling him top 10 might be selling him short at this point. Alright, core is done for Zest. We have a chrono boosted adept and warp gate research. No sign of a tech choice so far. Oh, Clem's going second racks. No factory at this point. And he's getting a reactor. Here comes that Clem bio. A bunker going down in front of the natural. Still no tech for Zest. He's making a stalker as the second thing to come out of his gateway. The Adept appears to be headed out. We're gearing up for a classic Reaper versus Adept confrontation. Oh, a third Rax for Clem. Who needs a factory when you have a billion Marines to march on your opponent? Twilight Council for Zest. Perhaps Blink Stalkers? Regardless, Zest Nexus will complete. He has four probes ready to take advantage and he immediately starts chrono boosting more. Clem is going to work on the Adept who's trying to get a scout off. That Reaper has a bunker to escape to. And now two Marine buddies. This place is not safe for young adepts. The depots rise up and block the shade. Zest takes a quick peek, gets nothing, and wisely decides it's past curfew. He's sending his adept home. And Clem's natural's up and running. A second gateway in Robo for Zest. That Twilight Council is not researching anything. That suggests Zest might not have made the Twilight Council for anything Twilighty. Oh yeah, Twilight is a little too bright. He wants to go dark, as in Dark Shrine. This is going to be early Dark Templar, people. I'm getting the chills. Reaper comes in for what could be a huge scout. He's forced back. He might lose his life for the attempt. He needs to heal. Where are the combat drugs? Oh my god, that was so cool. How often do you see an adept shoot up like that? That is going to be in the replay footage. I'm going to want to talk about that. But for now, we gotta point out that Zest is also making a warp prism. It's not just DTs, it's DT drops. Clem has double tech labs on the go. He's getting stim and combat shields simultaneously. Which means he can make marauders at the same time. Clem has a much bigger army. Zest's investment is now in tech. And in his much quicker third. So, assuming he doesn't cancel that in the next 10 seconds, Zest isn't trying to go all in with his Dark Templar rush. He just wants to do enough damage to pay for it and optimally get somewhat ahead. The third base suggests he intends to transition. Clem is moving out. He's got a stim timing. That could leave his base undefended. He's going to get hit first. Zest might have just figured out Clem's number. He's got this timed out perfectly. Three DTs warp in. Two are going to get shuttled to the main. The eBay is only halfway done. Clem's going to have to rely on scans here. Or the death of a lot of SCVs. Scan at the natural, he pins the DT. But he's also getting chopped up at the main. There's the SCV pull, eight kills so far. 
Clem's assault is almost there, and Zest doesn't have any defense either. Clem's SEVs retreat to the natural. Stim has completed, and Clem is inside the front door. Second scan goes, oh, and Clem is gonna clean up. He traps the DTs with his SCVs. And now it's Zest's turn to no pain. Clem depowers everything in his natural. And he's got more worker kills. This goes very badly for Zest. Zest did manage to warp in defensive DTs. Clem stims again. Might as well since they can't survive a DT hit anyway. It's now 30 pro kills. Zest has nothing left for economy. The stutter step is killing him. The DTs will get the cleanup, but is there anything left of Zest? Well, he does have a warp prism and three Nexi to rebuild his probes. Clem is dumping his money into turrets. Oh my god, 35 probe kills? That was more than a probe a second. You've heard of DPS, but how about PPS? Probes per second. Oh no, don't throw away the warp prism. Phew, he gets the DT down. But does Zest know about the turret that's up there? It has a sight range of 11, and it covers a lot of the main. Okay, Zest is marshalling his DTs, and that's good. But the surprise value's gone. The hit points and shields on a Dark Templar is only 120. A pack of bile will carve that right up. Oh, Clem's not even gonna wait. He's not gonna let the threat of DTs keep him pinned in his base. He's just gonna go kill Zest. Zest will get to hit first again. We'll see what Clem's left behind for defense. Not a lot. It's three Marines on two DTs. Nice micro with the warp prism. He's gonna force the marines to move between bases. You would think SCVs versus Dark Templars would be a bad idea, but Clem's making it work. Zest is on the clock here. Clem's almost at his doorstep. Oh, and Clem is just producing more and more bio. They've stimmed it. He's going after the warp prism. He gets it. Clem rings his doorbell. Is anybody home? Yes, it's GG. It's Gordon Gustopolis, Mr. GG. Okay, so... I almost feel like I shouldn't even upload this game as it's so misleading. Clem makes Dark Templar look like non-threatening cuddle toys instead of the vicious game-ending killers that they are. Normally, when you withdraw your army to attack and DT slip in and you have no missile turrets, too bad, you've just lost the game. Not Clem, he makes that look easy. Now, his attack gets all the attention, but there's nothing that special there. All he did was walk in and kill everything indiscriminately. Sure, he did focus down the pylons and depower Zest, but any pro would have done that. What was really impressive was how he multitasked his defense. He saved his scan energy, wrapped up the DTs with his workers, and polished them off with just the minimal amount of bio left at home. It looked like he didn't break a sweat. And I can't tell you how big the graveyard is with players who have been wrecked, absolutely wrecked by Zest DTs. Zest's strategy looked good to me. He timed it out to hit right when an aggressive stim timing would come. And he successfully predicted that's what Clem would be doing. Because Clem kind of does that a lot. So my analysis is pretty useless here. Zest's attack should have worked, or at least a lot better than it did. Maybe if he hadn't expanded and he had an extra gate instead and then a couple more Dark Templar. I don't know. The SCVs probably would have killed those two with their Hydro Spanners. Anyways, let me distract you from my incomprehensible madness by showing you an adept shooting upwards. So, I believe what happened here was Clem was trying to do something super cool, but it just didn't work. The idea is, he throws down a KD-8 charge right in his own path. Then he dekes around it, hoping to suck the shade right on top of it. He has to time it for the exact moment the adept materializes. He's a nanosecond too quick, he hits himself instead and the adept is unharmed. And then Zest winds up looking super good because he gets his aerial shot off. But really, this is all Clem. I love how the adept just stands there callously watching the corpse fall. Or should I say the rainstorm of body parts. After that, there's only one thing to do, and that is get to game two. Adjutant, if you would please. The game begins now. Pillars of gold, they call this map, but I don't get it. Nobody diversifies their portfolio with gold anymore. It's all cryptocurrency now. Maybe we should get with the times and call it Pillars of Bitcoin. Did you know there's a specific word for a brawl that takes place between carnies and townsfolk? It's called a clam. 
I googled that. It's a real thing. You know you're having a good brawl when it spawns its own verb. Looks like Zest is going to repeat that Reaper block opening. Last game he was right about the Reaper, but Clem never actually went for the door. Oh well, I'm sure our Protoss player got over it. But let me just tell you out of the blue, Dial, Dove, Irish Spring, Coast, and Ivory, these are all soap brands I will not buy. I only want Zest! I'm going to be very keen to see what adjustment Zest has for Game 2 after that dismantling he suffered. I worry it might have been a bit demoralizing. I still feel like strategically, he had a good plan. Anyways, it was a gate and go, which means that Zest will have an opportunity to harass that Rax and maybe delay that command center. It is more and more rare that you ever see Protoss succeed at either, but that doesn't stop him from trying. Stargate arrives, Zest's gonna complete the Reaper block with his core. He'll prioritize his tech before his Nexus. Clam does start up that Reaper once again. He's queuing minerals for his command center. Zest has put down his Nexus. Every nanosecond he can delay Clem is something. Clem has 400 minerals. This is an official delay here. It's an actual inconvenience. Maybe we should just give Zest the trophy and call it a day. Yeah, maybe we'll play out the game anyway. If Clem digs extra deep, maybe he could still bring it back. Clem's SEV is going to get the confirmation on that natural, and he's going to go right on home. Core completes. It's an adept, followed by warp gate deck. No immediate tech choice. We're seeing this more and more. Clem is mixing it up from game one. This time he goes for the immediate factory. Looks like a 1-1-1 build so far. Clem's about to get his second scout. His Reaper's coming into the Protoss natural. The Adept is done, though. He might remember how that went down for him last game. She blew him out of the sky, and the poor Reaper was essentially posterized in the post-game. A slow-mo for my amusement. Wahahaha. The Reaper's going to retreat back. He did not see the tech choice, which was a Robo. I believe there is a bunker being made, yes, for that Reaper to retreat to. That Robo has me interested. If it was Zerg, I'd be thinking Century Immortal. Oh, Clem wants to turn the tables on that Adept. Shade is out. Oh, and Zest gets the first blood. Forget that. Shade completes Adept all alone in the main. She's going to get a kill. The Reaper flies back to deal with her. Oh, forget the Reaper. It's Clem's killer SCVs. That is so unfair. How come his SCVs are like Ultralisks? If I try that, I'd just die. All right, Robo completes, and maybe we can get some insight as to what's going on here. We can. It's followed by a Robotics Bay. It's Sprint Tech for Zest. I'm thinking he wants to be ready for Clem's bio this game. An early Colossus could be a nice surprise for a big pack of Marines. Clem cancels his mine and opts for a single Hellion instead. Oh, the plot thickens. There's a warp prism coming out of that robo. Could Zest be joining the growing number of pro Protoss players experimenting with Colossus drops? Oh, the Reaper does try to get to the main. He finds it blocked. And there's our opening warp gate ceremony. Iridescent black holes for everyone. Clem's finished his starport. He's making a medevac. And he does have reactored marines on the go. Oh, did the Reaper see the hallucinated oracle? Rather than just make a phoenix, Zest is going to try to fake a Stargate. I love it. It's a scout and disinformation at the same time. Clem loads his medevac. No sign that he's adjusting in response to that oracle. Too bad. That would have been cool. Oracle sweeps the main. Oh, Clem cancels his liberator and switches to a viking. He did adjust, but there's a bit of an irony here. A Viking is not ideal, given that Zest is making a Colossus. Zest might have outsmarted himself with his own mind games here. Oh, Clem's drop might be intercepted. There's two Stalkers up top. It's a two-pronged attack, though. Clem has forces on the west side. There's no stim yet. Those Stalkers should be able to micro this. But his attention might be divided. Clem's Hellions getting the probe kills at the natural. With additional warp in Zest is getting the cleanup at the main. But it's nine probe kills. The Colossus spawns to finish off the Hellions. The surprise on that Colossus is lost. And Zest was really hoping he'd be facing more Marines. But my heart is filled with joy because it is going to be a Colossus drop. Zest is researching warp prism speed to help make it happen. 
The wrinkle is it's not just Colossus. Zest is bringing in a horde of stalkers to go with it. And a single adept to supervise. Clem does have a tank to splat those stalkers and he's working on a second one. And twin Vikings are going to make the airspace most unfriendly. We'll have to see how this goes. I think it's going to be an elevator. Oh, the Colossus really goes to work on those Marines. He has less success with the siege tank. Remember, he doesn't have Colossus range yet. In fairness, Clem has no upgrades of any kind. Clem's army is just getting depopulated here. Okay, his second tank arrives and he can get control of his main. Clem even resorts to attacking with his killer SCVs. But even Clem's SCVs have to struggle against that Colossus. Oh, that just cemented Zest's worker lead. 12 SCV kills and counting. I love how there's that one stalker who couldn't fit in the elevator. He's stuck at the bottom of the cliff watching everything. Oh, a recall! Clem gets a tank shot on those stalkers before they go. The speedy warp prison hasn't gone home though. There might be another drop of the natural. There is! Zest is gonna rake those lasers across those workers. Will it cost him his warp prison? No, he gets away. And then he starts his third. Zest gets himself in a good position. And if his opponent was anybody else other than Clem, you might say he was now favored to win the game. That medevac's gonna load with six marines and oh look what we missed while we were having fun. Zest has added a couple of gates and a dark shrine. Holy Tahiti's. Clem is hurting on resources lost. That is not a healthy number. I'll tell you what else isn't healthy. There is no eBay for Clem. He's going to be completely reliant on scans. So it's probably a good thing that he's completed that third orbital. It's a follow-up Colossus drop, but there's still a siege tank in there, if I'm not mistaken. There is. Oh, Zest doesn't care. He's like, I recharged its shields for a reason. Behold, the grace and might of the Dark Shrine. Mortal minds cannot comprehend its architecture. And here comes that warp in. These alien commandos want revenge for the way they were made to look like turd muffins last game. Here comes three more. Oh, Clem's Vikings are going to get the scout. Oh, yeah. Zest could lose all three DTs. He drops one, too. A huge pickup for Clem. One DT in his main is a lot better than three. Clem's SCV is going into ultralisk mode once again. He's going to make Zest look ridiculous for trying this again. Okay, Clem has finished that eBay. He just can't seem to get his turrets up. Only three SCVs lost for what could have been a game-ending blow. There's that extra DT waiting for the elevator that's never going to come. This one, however, slips into the main and he's going to do some damage. Clem is what we in the industry like to refer to as between scans. That results in some kills. The scan is ready. Clem has been floating his third over. Oh, if Zest is watching, he'll have a chance to block the landing. He does. He's like, just taking in the view. Oh, so annoying. Clem needs to set that down because he needs the scan energy. That DT's twin brother's trying to do some damage at the natural. Meanwhile, Zest's third is up and running and he's out mining Clem in a big, big way. Oh, a body block on the tank. That is so annoying. At this point, Clem's probably like, I think I prefer the Colossus drops. That command center may have a happy face star, but I assure you, he's only smiling on the inside. Oh, Zest is taking a fourth. Look at the might of his economy at this point. Oh, is that DT going to escape outside the radius of the scan? He does. He forces out a second scan for the cleanup. Remember, these scans are costing Clem mules. I suppose they're also costing Zest DTs. Clem does have his stim and combat shields at this point. He's about to get plus one. And he's moving out. Clem has decided he's got to deal some damage if he's going to catch up. Zest may well be ready for him. He's got zealot legs, he's working on Blink, and he has a battle duck for that Archon. And he still has a Colossus on the field somewhere. Clem is headed to hit the third, I wonder if he knows there's a fourth. There's the Colossus softening up his Marines. The Vikings are able to quickly deal with that, a very good start. But Zest has a pincer maneuver saved up here. Clem stims, but it's GG. He sees the might of the Protoss army and throws in the towel. We've got ourselves a tied series, people. So, in this game, Clem hit first. He did do some damage, but Zest was able to sprint tech and still largely defend at the same time. That meant Zest's counterpunch had a lot of kick to it. Colossus drops backed by stalkers. 
And that worked really well. All that extra bonus light damage against those Marines and SCVs. Tanks were the answer, but they just weren't in position to cover enough of his two bases. From there, Zest pulls out the DTs a second time. This time, Zest has the money to make a lot of DTs. He's able to stretch out Clem's scans and put him in a very bad position. I don't know for sure if that's how Zest drew it up, but he's got to be satisfied with how it played out. Our best of three series is now a best of one. Adjutant, if you would please. The game begins now. Okay, let's settle this. We've had two great games so far. Clem was utterly dominant in game one, but Zest looked pretty solid in his win too. And let me tell you about our South Korean Protoss player. He once won not one, not two, but three premier tournaments in a single year. He is Zest! Time for battle. And we are indeed getting serious. He's going for that tight macro position. You can see how many seconds Clem's Rax is behind. Sometimes you sacrifice positioning for those early game seconds. It's still not down. Our French Terran player can't vote. He's not licensed to drive, but he is licensed to kill nerds and StarCraft professionals. He is Clem! Get some! I really hope for the rest of the StarCraft scene that Clem is somewhere close to his top form now, because if he isn't and he continues to improve on this curve, he's just going to wreck the world. Possibly by wrecking Zest tournament hopes with his eBay block. Which Zest has no idea of because he's done the macro positioning. Now he sees it after he's already put his core down. Good reflex. He immediately dumps some of those extra minerals into a pylon. Because he won't be making a nexus anytime soon. He immediately starts up a zealot. He'll need that. The good news is Clem didn't quite get it to full health before it was discovered. Zest grabs his second gas. Since he's blocked from building a nexus, he'll spend his money on anything he can. If there was an infomercial right now, he'd probably buy a set of brand spanking new bulletproof pots with only four easy payments of $19.99. Oh, Clem's SCV snuck in there and put a couple more hit points on that thing. The Zealot is now on it, though. Meanwhile, Clem's factory is halfway done. And there's the inaugural mule. Clem's minerals per minute is going to shoot right up. Zest's core completes. He starts up that adept and the warp gate research. Clem's SCV's still hanging around. He's got a patrol path going on. He looks pretty sus. Factory finishes. Clem's got his money saved up. Quite a bit, in fact. Oh, he's putting down a high ground command center and also a starport. It's a proxied starport. Just got to find it there for us. Top right, deep on Zest's side of the map. Meanwhile, eBay is clear and the Nexus is finally down. The Adept rushes up to the Terran main and finds it blocked. For all Zest knows, he's getting one based. He's started a Stargate. But for now, I'm much more interested in what Clem's doing with his Starport. Maybe a quick Liberator harass? Zest Scout got him concerned. He's pulling everything back. I'm betting if he planned on making an oracle out of that Stargate, he won't now. Clem's going up to four Hellions. Oh yes, and he's making a medevac out of that Starport. So it's going to be a Hellion drop. The kind that comes earlier than expected. Like an Amazon delivery. I don't know though, Zest is really buttoning down the hatches here. His Zealot's on patrol and he's making a Phoenix. That's pretty handy against a medevac. Oh, look at the poor service here. These Hellions are going to have to drive all the way to their pickup point. I guess it'll help build character. Clem doesn't want to attack with lazy Hellions. Wait, where's he going? He's forgotten the Hellions. Oh, he's just scouting ahead, I think. I'm going to look like a total fool if he's not picking up those Hellions. Okay, there we go. Meanwhile, the proxied starport is going to have to make the long trip home, and that is one long trip. We'll check back in with him in 10 minutes. Clem bombs the natural and finds it empty. This place has been sanitized. And then two Phoenix are on his medevac. Seeing as he has no chance to get away, Clem decides to recommit. The defense is overwhelming, but there are probes for the taking. Oh, wow. Five kills. 
There goes the medevac, but that went better than I thought it would. Oh my god, those Hellions aren't actually going to escape, are they? No, no they are not. These dudes have given their lives for the Dominion. Or should I say, Clemminion? Eh, let's not. That sounded a bit too much like Chlamydia. Sometimes you try to create a new word with some fusion, it does not work. Meanwhile, Clem's got his natural down. And he's building a shiny new pair of Raxes. Wow, that starport got back a lot faster than I thought it would. He had an express pass. S thinks he's got a window to attack, and he is right. Clem does have a pair of Cyclones, though, and those are very useful for pushing back Phoenix. But here come the Adepts with their bonus damage against those Marines. Meanwhile, the Phoenix are trying to sneak around the back. They're trying to force Clem to split his forces. How does he defend both mineral lines at the same time? Well, he is Clem, the multitasking god, so that may be one way. I mean, how does he have time to drop mules while this is going on? Well, with the exception of that zealot, Zest's forces are headed home. He actually did less damage than that Hellion drop, but he did keep all his forces alive. Zest does have a little worker lead there, but not much more than Protoss normally has at this phase of the game. Zest appears to put a halt to the Stargate production. He's adding a couple of warp gates instead. I guess I'd have to say both players defended these hits rather well, and they're kind of moving into the next phase of the game on even footing. I do like that Zest is forcing out Vikings. I'm sure that's not what Clem wanted for his bio. But Clem might not be too disappointed with that decision. Zest is making an early Robo support bay. Zest had a lot of success with early Colossus in game two. Here comes Clem on the attack, and he's bringing three SCVs with him. That always interests me. Is he bringing them along for repair, for meat shielding? Or is he perhaps planning on adding some bunkers? Oh well. Observers might as well not have the cloak property when they're up against Clem. He's so good at spotting those. Zest kind of got caught teching and powering here. He could be in some trouble. He's trying to add a pair of shield batteries, and that's exactly what he needs, but they're coming a little late. Ah, these sentry force fields might buy him a little bit of time. Clem's tank is sieged up. He controls a huge amount of space in front of Zest's base now. Oh, and he's going to use that zone of control to try to get down some bunkers. If he gets entrenched on Zest's doorstep, this is going to be so hard to deal with. The shield batteries are here, though. Battery overcharge could really help out Zest here. As could a sweet lift on that tank. Clem astutely kills the lifting Phoenix. But the Stalkers finish off the tank anyway. There's that battery overcharge. Zest is not letting those bunkers finish. Oh, but another tank has arrived. Siege tanks. Splatting Stalkers since 1998. Lone Zealots rushing in to deal with the tanks. Also since 1998. Zest has survived. He's gonna hold. He's gonna clean this up. Clem brought a deadly attack. Zest has his first Colossus on the way. The problem I foresee is that Clem has been really good about building Vikings. He's going to be ready. Zest takes his third. I'm surprised to see that Clem is ahead on minerals. That's the power of mules for you. Clem started plus one attack out of his eBay. After dealing with early Dark Shrines two games in a row, this time he's going to be ready. Here's another difference for you. This time Zest is getting Thermal Lance for his Colossus. He's going to up the range on his Colossus from 7 to 9. It doesn't sound like much, but it's a huge difference. Clem is building his third command center in his main. He's reluctantly decided to bring his forces home. As he does so, he starts up the stim pack upgrade. For Zest, a forge. Oh, maybe Clem is not headed home. He's circling around to see if he can get at that third, perhaps. Oh, this is almost kind of noteworthy. You almost never see anybody go after these rocks. Maybe Clem has something to teach us about this map. But first he's going to show us a little parlor trick. The David Copperfield maneuver. He's going to make this mountain disappear. I saw it on Penn and Teller and I totally know how they did it. They tried to distract me with their lovely assistant Vikings. But it didn't work. Clem drops a scan. He sees that Zest's third is just about done warping in. That cues him to get his own third into position. Well, I'm sure he would have done that anyway, but... This way he knows where he stands relative to Zest in the game right now. Yeah, you'd better pull back, Observer. Otherwise, Clem will blow you out of the sky. This is restricted airspace. This is the Republic of Clem. 
Oh, combat shields to go with that stim. And Clem's going to get a reactor for his starport. That thing's gone without an add-on for quite some time. I guess that's what happens when you're flying across the map. Clem continues to lead in minerals per minute, even though he doesn't have quite as many workers as Zest. Zest, though, is leading by quite a significant margin in the category of things with spindly legs. The Colossus and Stalker count continue to rise. And then, just to continue the theme of legs, he's getting the Zealot leg upgrade. One day, I'll finally remember to call it Charge. It's just such a weird name for an upgrade. It just sort of implies that before, the Zealot doesn't know how to charge. What? I could move towards the enemy? Nobody told me that! What an innovation! Okay, so Zest is going to reposition his team spindly leg so it covers his third. And from there, he's going to get himself a four... No, no, he is not. Because his observer has spotted Clem moving out with five tanks, five marauders, and an ungodly number of marines. Clem appears to want to go for the natural again. I don't know if that's the right choice given the number of shield batteries. But Zest is riding out to meet him anyway. It's Team Legs versus Team Tread. I know, I know, the Marines have legs too, but they also have treads on their boots. Oh, the Colossus depopulate those Marines quite a bit there before pulling back. And with the pullback, Clem's gonna advance his tanks. Anybody for a game of Leapfrog? Speaking of popular tactics from 1998, with that Viking to spot and give vision, Clem's tanks just got position over the edge of the natural. Oh, but Zest is going to use another battery overcharge. He's going to soak the hits and go right at the Terran army. It's pretty rare, though, that the phrase, let's just take the tank hits, turns out to be a good idea. Oh, there's a gaggle of hidden zealots waiting to be called into action. Looks like Zest wants to increase their numbers before he sends them in. Otherwise, I'd say now's kind of the time. You know where Clem's army is. It's on your doorstep. Tanks on siege. Clem trying to stay mobile. Oh, Zest just lost a pylon and got supply blocked. This drop force took out his forward pylon. It's going to be a two-pronged attack. Here's the back door drop. Two colossi scramble up to meet the bio. Meanwhile, main force punching in. Meanwhile, the zealots make their move. Main force pulls back. Zest is racking up the SCV kills. Landed Vikings are going to help defend. It looks like both players are going to clean up. And once again, our boxers trade punches and they're both standing. Clem's going to escape with both his medevacs. And I do believe that warp prison was holding a Colossus. We could see Colossus drops again. Clem is pulling everything back home. And with his SCVs depleted, it's Zest who has the mining advantage. Clem is still looking to drop. The warp prisms traded four zealots for that Colossi. Oh, the dropships have seen each other. They simultaneously spoil each other's plans. Zest decides he wants to give chase. I do love that in StarCraft, every dropship has its own characteristics that makes it so interesting. And while this mini drama is going on, Zest is picking up the upgrade Blink, and he's got double forges on the go to get ahead on numeric upgrades. Currently, though, he's still behind. Zest is going to replace that missing pylon with a new one for vision. Oh, Clem tries to check for a fourth base, but scans the wrong location. Ah, uh, but he's going to be wise enough to send a Marine to check the other location. Rather than blow two scans at this point, he wants to risk a 50-cent Marine instead. Poor dude, he's going to stim all the way there just to die. Always reminds me of the story of Faye Depites, the creator of the Marathon who died at the end of his journey. Ugh, well that vision pylon's not going to last long. Once again, seeing that Zest is taking his fourth, Clem is going to match it. Zest is assembling another Zealot raiding party. This one's definitely going to get spotted. There's a Vision Depot, and there is a Viking out there. But the Zealots might just be the distraction. Zest has a Death Ball, looking to see if he can delay Clem's fourth. Oh, he just takes a pounding trying to get through that choke. Look at that tank line. Oh, I think he's still taking tank fire while he's trying to break those back rocks. He gets it, but Clem makes him earn it. Clem is completely maxed, by the way. I'm not sure how Zest thinks he's going to be able to attack that Terran position with the tank sieged up. Clem liked what he saw. He's going to pursue. His Vikings might get that warp prism to start. No, he pulls back. And while this back and forth was happening, Clem turned his fourth into a fortress. That's going to be a really tough take for Zest now. 
Oh, I love this. I love when Terran players just immediately start making their next command center. Oh, this Terran force is going to get caught out. They're like, oh, it's only four stalkers. No, it's not. And I do believe that up north, it is zealot raiding time again. This time, Zest penetrates to the third. He kills the Marauder. He finds that soft underbelly of SCVs. What? How did he not murder like seven of them? Terran is after him. Oh, look, they're like running in tandem. Oh, these Zells are going to get slaughtered. They're going to learn about concussive shells. Clem has started making ghosts. He's looking to trade out his maxed army so he can upgrade its composition. Zest does have the economic lead once again. He's also adding in a dark shrine. Might as well make those DTs three games in a row. Zest is destroying his own rocks. He knows he can't destroy Clem's army and he wants to attack something. Oh, Clem sends out another marine scout and discovers there's a huge platoon of zealots on his doorstep. That was good intel. He mobilizes his army in response. Look at those tanks clumped up like that. They look like a single monstrosity of Voltron. Well, maybe a really drunk Voltron. The Marine Marauders see the Immortal Archon and they just got a stim. Oh, sweet dodge on that disruptor shot. I really like Zest's decision to add in those disruptors. He's going to max out with them. Oh, those hardworking zealots. They rip down the defenses and then flee before they can get any SCVs. I like those disruptors because if the tanks siege up, Zest will have the option to outrange them. And if the tanks go mobile, Zest is happy with that too. Wow, Zest has really got his gates up. We can see that the Dark Shrine finished. Oh, Clam is researching enhanced shockwaves for his ghosts. That's going to make them so dangerous. The one thing I don't love all that much is that the visual for the EMP is sometimes hard to see. And in late game TVP, the EMPs are critical, and at the same time, they can be easy to miss. When a game-changing fungal occurs, you know it. When a storm turns the game on its head, you see it. But when an EMP is a game-changer, maybe you caught it. Well, we've got ourselves a pretty good back-and-forth game here. The economic lead is traded back and forth many, many times. Zest has the numeric upgrade lead, but he hasn't been able to get too much done with it. Clem's been winning a ton of fights out on the battlefield, but he can't seem to solve the battery overcharge. And as soon as I say that, he decides to do just that. He swings to the other side, away from the battery, forces the probe pull, and then he boosts off to the main. But Zest has a two-pronged attack of his own. Zealots hit that third. There's two marauders in a bunker there. Bio hits the main, and it doesn't look like anybody's home. But here, here is the main battle. And Protoss is already on the run. The Vikings getting tons of hits off on those Colossi. Zest doesn't have any more Zealots or Stalkers in his army there. He's down to all those expensive tech units. Clem would love to crush that army. Zest is trying to ward him back with Disruptor shots. Oh, his Disruptors are taking tank fire. Clem pulls his bio back to dodge. The tanks take it. It takes two Disruptor hits to kill a tank. It looks like Clem's trying to dodge the Disruptor Blast by hiding behind this conveniently located dinner table. Oh, and now he's advancing. There, EMP, you saw it! The EMP just knocks the shields right off that Disruptor. Oh, Zest has warped in some Zealots. He's gonna go! And he's combined the rest of his forces! This is a huge clash! Zest has snuck in a couple DTs to improve his DPS. If Clem doesn't see it, this could go bad for him. Clem saw it, he dropped the scan. Supplies dropping rapidly for both players, but Terran is coming out on top. Zest has been badly decimated. If Clem can capitalize, he has an opportunity to win this game. Even the Vikings have landed to try to deal with those last zealots. He's cleaned it up. Zest is in so much trouble now. He's warping in a fresh set of stalkers. This is his army. He has to hold. He needs the shield batteries involved. He blinks back. Clem has a tank to defeat this, but he's got to feel the pressure of time. The bio presses forward. There's marauders and ghosts in there. Battery overcharge is on. Zest is rotating his stalkers. Clem is trying to make marauders and rally them forward. Zest is retreating. He's gonna lose the base. There's only three marauders left. The tank has position over the pylon. But Zest had the time to warp in ten more zealots. And now he's making disruptors. Can he bounce back from this? There's the blink forward. Can he get he gets the tanks? All those expensive air units are vulnerable now. But here comes Clem's reinforcements. And now Zest is back on the run again. 
He does not have the composition to deal with marauders anymore. Zest will be forced to hide behind the skirt of his nexus. Clem stems and goes right at him. There is a warp prism with two disruptors now. The marauder fire is shelling the Terran position. The batteries are going down. Five Archons are being made. They are here. Oh, but Clem's got a tank on that high ground. It's raining death below. Zest is going to have to find a way to deal with that tank. But the Marauders are controlling the ramp. This is brilliant. Zest is trying to slip some units by. Oh, the Warp Prism. He's warping in Zealots on the tank. That's one very cool way to deal with the tank. Oh, but Zest's forces have been gutted below. Oh, he GG's anyway. Awesome tactics by both players at the end there, but Zest was spent, and the series is over. Clem is the victor. Okay, so I should probably be talking about this game, but seeing Clem play so awesome... It makes me kind of want to talk about Katowice, the upcoming big tournament. I got myself a copy of the most recent betting odds to see where Clem ranks. They've got him all the way down on number 9. That makes sense if you consider that Clem only has one premier tournament win. And it was Europe only. Europe only. Are there any good players in Europe, I wonder? But on the other hand, the fact that Clem is just tearing it up and is such a beast right now on top of his game makes me think that he's underrated. Well, if he's underrated then, Zugzwang, then who above him on that list do you drop below? Well, now you're killing me, imaginary person. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Clem can beat Rogue, but technically Rogue is the reigning Katowice champion. It's hard to give him that level of disrespect. And speaking of disrespect, how about stats? I love stats, but he hasn't been as consistent as he once was. I could see Clem take him. Heck, I could see Clem take anybody in that list. Would I take Clem as number one? No, he doesn't have the pedigree yet. But if he wins it, it won't be a stunner. A lot of people will say, I saw this coming. So what do you think of the list right now? I'm not here to encourage gambling or betting. I'm too much of a miser. But if you were to engage in such a list, who would you say was underrated? I've got lots more to say about that topic, but I feel suddenly like I should be compiling that for another video. So I'll just say Clem is awesome. Zest, you're pretty awesome too there, buddy. Sorry for neglecting you. And then I want to remind you to live life because nobody wants to die and hold position. From my base to yours, Zugzwang out. To continue your StarCraft journey, Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stim pack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugzwang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugzwang out.